nominalizations. Part of the distortion category in the Milton model. And this is the NLP and language series from Zetetic. A nominalization is a verb or action which has been made into a noun. I'll just say that again. It's a verb or action which has been made into a noun. Abstract nouns would be another way of describing it. It's a conceptual idea rather than a thing or an object. In the Milton model, as you maybe know by now, we deliberately allow our client their own interpretation or meaning or understanding of a concept. Whereas in the meta model, we would be asking them to define it. In this example, <coughs> sorry, in this video, I'm going to give you seven examples of this pattern nominalization and tell you why it's useful to you. And at the end of the video, <coughs> there will be a personal story about my own experience of nominalization. Example one, the nominalization of to learn is learnings. So to learn, that's the verb, learnings, that's the noun made into a noun or a nominalization. So if we take a word like learnings, the client can interpret that as they like and we don't need the detail. Learnings can also be put in the past. So that means for the client that in their experience, they've already done the learning. They don't have to keep doing more learning and learning and learning. They've done some learning. So for example, where you might use it is, I might say to a client, you probably know what previous learnings you can use to achieve this project. You probably know what previous learnings you can use to achieve this project. So what I'm saying there really is like, you know, you've already done this learning, you can just put it into practice. A second example where you might want to use a nominalization is communication. That's a nominalization of the verb to communicate. Now, if you're going to ask a hundred people what communication meant to them, I imagine you would get some very different answers, maybe even a hundred different answers. But maybe in an organization or a business or a group of people, we do just want to improve communication in general. And maybe we don't actually mind what specific examples of communication are improved. So we might use a word like communication and allow people to interpret that however they like. Example three, the verb is to object and the nominalization is objection. So recently I made an objection to an application for a late night bar and music venue near my home. And I felt like once I had made the objection formally, nominalization, I no longer felt like I had to keep objecting or moaning or complaining about it. I was able to relax, job done, objection made, full stop. This is the effect a nominalization has. Example four is decision. That's from the verb to decide. So sometimes people say, I've made a decision. And that usually means that's the end of it. Don't question my decision. But quite often that choice of a decision and having made a decision is quite arbitrary because in effect we are deciding all the time. 
And I think if you consider most, I won't say all, but certainly most decisions you've made in your life, you could probably actively re-decide them if you chose to. But you, in many cases, will have left that decision as a decision because you've done enough action on it and you wanted the action to stop and to say this is an end point, full stop again. Example five is solution. And this is very similar to decision, I think. A bit like deciding, actually we can be continuously solving things, but we may decide that the solution is the point where we're gonna stop. We've got the solution. Example six is confidence. That's a nominalization. If someone is genuinely working on confidence, nominalization, effectively, it's likely that they're actually becoming more confident, action, all the time. But rather than just feel like they have to want, no, sorry, rather than feel that they have to go on for the rest of their lives, just becoming more and more and more confident, they might want to take a break from that or they might want to decide that that is as confident as they want to be for a few years anyway. So again, they put the full stop in. And example seven is of achievement. This is my final example, although I've got a few other things to say. We may want a rest from always achieving. So we might want to say that we have made an achievement because to be always achieving, always at it, sounds kind of hard work, doesn't it? So we might want to stop and say, this is an achievement. So those are just seven examples, but you'll probably notice lots more now that I'm drawing your attention to it, especially in business. Business is like nominalization city, it really is. Now, another thing that you might be wondering about is what's all this got to do with wheelbarrows? And I'll just explain. One of the things that people in NLP sometimes say is that you know that a noun is a nominalization if you can't put it in a wheelbarrow. Now, what that means is you can't put confidence in a wheelbarrow, but you could put a table or a chair or even a person in a wheelbarrow. When I first heard this, when I was learning NLP, I thought this was a really good example. And then in the subsequent courses where I was training people in it, I, I started to tell people about this idea about you can't put it in a wheelbarrow. And what I found is although that particular story had worked for me, for many people, it left them confused and left them saying, why are you talking about wheelbarrows? So I'm just mentioning it because it might work for you, but as I've also discovered, it might not. Now, this is my personal story. There was an organization that I worked in where I was regarded as somebody who was good at customer service, client service, service in general, which meant that I was always serving. I was always acting, I was always doing. Now I loved it, so that was all right with me, for me to be always doing it. I was fine with that. But what was really nice for me was that uh, one time we decided to have service awards in the organization and I won the service award. Now this is a good example of a use of nominalization because I got a sort of gold statuette thing, everybody clapped, I was congratulated by the chairman, I had achieved something. I had achieved a service award. That's like a certificate, an award, that kind of thing. When you use nominalizations, remember the rigor model. Recover information to generate experiential richness. Generate in the client. That is, the whole process does not need to be revealed to you but what you're generating in them, if you use this well, is experiential richness. So with this video, speaking to you from very rainy Bristol, with this video, if you like it, please like it, you know how to do that. 
please comment or ask a question. I love that. And if you want to subscribe, just click on the yellow logo.